So today, I want to have a positive discussion about the Captain Marvel movie, because while the superhero herself might not be looking so good right now, her alter ego, Carol Danvers, is looking frickin' fantastic. At least Brie Larson does, from pictures that were released earlier this week of her visiting an Air Force base to do research for the role. And I was actually planning to do a video about how excited I am for those pictures, uh, before the, the photos from the set leaked, showing once again that absolutely hideous super suit. But you know what? We covered that, and I want to circle back and still have this discussion about Carol Danvers, because I think it's not only very promising, but, but very important. Not just the movie, but to the way women are depicted on screen and female heroes, etc., etc. It's actually really exciting. But first, I want to have a little bit of a rebuttal to the super suit discussion from yesterday, because some hardcore Marvel, Marvel defenders, uh, and that's cool, um, came up kind of like a, you know, a strong line of defense for the suit, right? I saw it across the internet, right? And, and the, the, the defense was that's not her final suit, right? And that it's a Cree suit, right? And I think a lot of hardcore Marvel fans thought that would end the, dis the discussion. Not so, because I think both your points are incorrect. So I wanted to point that out. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is the fact that saying it's a Cree suit. And I would like to remind you that in my video, I said that I did expect those to be the Cree colors and that's why she was wearing them. But you can make a Cree suit that looks good um, that doesn't look like a, um, a cheap Avengers suit, right? I mean, uh, you've seen it in, the anima in some animation, etc., and it, it can look good, otherworldly, exciting. Uh, there are lots of things that can be instead of what we've got here. Uh, also, I'd like to point out that um, if it's someone else's suit, it wouldn't fit her as well as it does. I don't actually think it fits her that well, but it, I mean, there's tailoring versus whether or not it actually fits. And while I think it's poorly tailored, it's definitely her suit. So it's not like she's, some, some people said, oh, she's borrowing Jude Law's. I don't think that's the case at all. In fact, I would have preferred that if it didn't quite fit, right? I think, I think that would be interesting if she escaped and this was the only thing that she could find to wear. I think that would be cool, uh, but that's not what we're looking at. Uh, then as for this isn't her final suit, you know what? It is. I think the colors will change, but that's her final suit. Now, a number of you have pointed to the concept art and said, see, this is what it's gonna look like, but I'd like to just point out how this suit that we're looking at now actually has so many of the elements in the concept art that clearly, they just poorly executed the concept art. It's got the exact same uh, shape of the shoulder pads. It's got the hollow star. It's got the belt in the right place. It has the hip squares. It has the exact uh, design of the boots in terms of where the lines go. I mean, that's the suit. She's just, I guess, eventually going to decide, why am I wearing Cree colors? I'm back on Earth. I'm going to wear these instead. So that's what it looks like. Uh, some of you said maybe it's a stunt suit. She's not a stunt person. Uh, we've seen many Avengers filming, and they do not don very different suits for stunt work. Um, and it just, you know, this is the suit, and you, just, you should just accept it. And then, um, you know, if you want to defend it as is, fine, but don't go around claiming that uh, this isn't the suit, because it clearly is. All right, so also another, a couple other interesting points that were brought up. Uh, I said I didn't think it was good that it was loose fitting. Um, I, and I think that it's a misguided attempt to be more feminist, right? Like, ah, oh, she should wear a super tight suit. And you're like, yeah, I think she should, but not for reasons of having sex appeal. But as uh, actually a female viewer pointed out, uh, she has to be aerodynamic to be able to fly. This suit looks like it would have a lot of drag, so it doesn't make any sense. Unless she's not going to fly, and then how many female superheroes that fly in the comics are we going to have that don't fly on screen? It's getting ridiculous. Then as for the hair, this was another point that I saw a number of people make, which I agree. Not only does it not look good, but show, me, show us a woman who in real life does physical activity without pulling her hair back, right? And even our, most, our favorite silver screen heroines are guilty of not doing this, with the exception of Sarah Connor and Lara Croft. And God bless both of them. They look, and they look fabulous still. And I have to say, when I saw Brie Larson in these photos at the Air Force Base sporting a hairstyle worn by so many women in the military, I got so excited for Captain Marvel because I thought that was the look she would don. And maybe she will still in her Carol Danvers persona, but I don't see why it would translate to um, Captain Marvel as well. I mean, it looks, it's realistic, and it also still looks fabulous. So um, I just kind of imagine that that's what we were seeing with her on the Air Force uh, base would be what we saw with just her wearing the super suit. So imagine my surprise 
uh, when that's not the case whatsoever. And I would also like to say that you can have a crappy suit but still have not only a great movie, but perhaps even more importantly, a great character. And that's, again, what I want to discuss. So Brie Larson, Oscar-winning actress that she is, decided to do her research. She's done it before, reading the comic and rocking the look. Adorable. That photo that she tweeted out a while ago went a long way to making me get excited about her in the role. I appreciated that dedication. Uh, and then here, uh, most recently, she's gone to an Air Force base to learn what it's like to be an, an Air Force fighter pilot. But not just the flying part. I was impressed that it seemed that she was learning about the camaraderie as well. Because get this, Tony Stark is an inventor and industrial titan. Bruce Banner is a tortured scientist. Natasha Romanoff is a former Russian spy and killer. Scott Lang, a former thief. The list goes on and on. And as you might now just be noticing, it's all a bunch of loners. No wonder Civil War was unavoidable. Uh, even Nick Fury and Maria Hill are loners as part of a clandestine unit. And now they're unemployed. Uh, and Steve Rogers, he has the mindset of an outsider, you know, first from his pre-super soldier serum days, uh, you know, he hates bullies, right? Because he's always, you know, even though he now kind of looks like he would be the bullier, he still has that history of, uh, you know, of being bullied. It's like, it's that saying that whatever you're like during your formative years, that's the persona you carry for the rest of your life, no matter how you might change physically, right? I think that's fascinating, and I think it's very well depicted with Steve Rogers, you know, Chris Evans' version of him. And then, of course, he spent a lot of time in ice, and now he's a man out of time, so there's that element as well. Although, to be fair, Carol Danvers will apparently have the same situation. Maybe because it's not so much time has passed, it's not as bad for her, but we'll see. But anyway, just like she's in the comics, it seems that Carol Danvers will continue to be a well-adjusted, normal people person. Oh, that's amazing! Will anybody be able to relate to that? It does seem crazy, right? Um, but maybe she'll be aspirational, like uh, the Avengers version of Pollyanna, right? Let's play the glad game, everybody! Uh, and while fighter pilots are known for being hot shots, still at the end of the day, Maverick and Iceman needed each other. Yes, Top Gun. Speaking of Maverick and Iceman, uh, that is a fan favorite movie because of its cheesy, over-the-top depiction of hypermasculinity. And it's fun. And it's a, it's a cinematic classic. There's nothing wrong with Top Gun. But one of the things that it does is help cement the idea that fighter pilots are all dudes. And for a very long time, that was the case. In fact, when Carol Danvers was first introduced in the 1960s, she was the Air Force's security chief because women weren't allowed to be combat pilots. Uh, and it wasn't until 1993 that the U.S. allowed women to become fighter pilots. And today, while their numbers are still few, there are female fighter pilots, not just in the United States, but across the globe. And some of them even give their lives. And as more women join the military, uh, but also police departments and fire departments, I think it will be tremendously valuable to see a popular character like Carol Danvers in the MCU, which is crushing it right now, right? representing them on the silver screen as a successful member of a team. I think that's so important. I mean, uh, a long t uh, for a long time, the narrative of women in these groups is that they stand apart. They, you know, they come in and they show the boys how it's done, uh, and they're always set apart as the one female member of the team. I think it's really important to show a woman who is just simply a member of the team. Uh, for, and then with Carol Danvers, it'll be from the Air Force to eventually the Avengers. Uh, and so with these picks, I didn't see Brie Larson, but I saw Carol Danvers. And I'm beginning to see what Kevin Feige must have seen. Uh, although I still don't know what he was thinking when he approved that suit, right? He had to approve it, and I don't know why he was like, ah, back to the drawing board. It's idiot. Now, also, Larson is an activist, uh, and Carol Danvers has a history there as well, which might have also attracted Brie Larson to the role. For instance, back in the late 70s in the comic, uh, Danvers was actually requesting equal pay at work. In the comic book story, that's amazing. So I wouldn't be surprised to see that element in the film just a little bit, uh, like th that she's a team player, but to a point. And that's an important distinction that many women today are learning, you know, just today, that it's crucial for advancement in the workplace and society to understand that. You know, uh, women for a long time have felt, oh, when I go into the workplace, I want to be seen as a team player. Even, you know, I'm going to try and give that image, even though perhaps I'm not perceived that way. And maybe that sometimes that leads to making decisions that women aren't comfortable with. Scarlett Johansson actually made uh, a speech like that on the recent Women's March Day uh, to that effect. 
And so it would be great to see that shown by character. And an important part of that is once you make your point and you, you stand the line, you hold the line, then you go back to being a good member of the team. That's really important as well. And I think that we'll see that. Now, speaking of the team, lately in the comics, Carol Danvers has begun taking on leadership positions in the superhero community. Uh, the Avengers, taking over Alpha Flight, etc. Probably because she has this movie coming up. But still, what's nice about it is her writers and all these stories have used her leadership opportunities to show how it's her history of being a member of the team and a people person that makes her such an effective and popular leader. And I would love to see that explored as well. So while, again, her superhero suit is very unfortunate and likely the one that we're stuck with, uh, what you're looking at here with these Air Force pictures is the real Carol Danvers. And I hope that shines through even with that ugly suit. And if it's done well enough, it will. And it's the reason she'll be so unique to this, not just the MCU, but the superhero genre, if the MCU gets her right. But I think so far it looks at least like Brie Larson understands or is, is beginning to understand the character. So I'm curious, what do you think of these pictures uh, from the Air Force base? And what do you think of how Carol Danvers will likely differ from the other uh, loners that currently populate the MCU? And do you agree that her Air Force uniform is perhaps just as important or more important than the Captain Marvel one? Uh, also, your thoughts on the hair, the look, etc. And I have to say, with Black Widow, Wonder Woman, and other characters out there, do you think that Carol Danvers with her fighter pilot next door appeal will be as popular as they are. I hope so. I really do. I think it's it's a very I think this has the potential to be a really interesting character. And it's also pretty cool to see her finally come into her own after decades of being known simply as Rogue's power source, right? So I'm curious to hear your thoughts down below. Again, we're trying to keep this conversation positive. Again, it could, she could be a great character who's stuck wearing an ugly suit, right? And you know, maybe, you know we, there was such a big resounding response yesterday. They're just starting to film the Captain Marvel movie. Maybe they heard us and they can fix it a little bit. Oh, yeah, also some of you said that this might be, they might be replacing stuff with CGI. There's no reference points on the costume, you know, for the, for the, you know, you can see that they have dots usually like that. And also it would just be prohibitively expensive for that to be the case all the time. Unless she were to become binary, but it's way too soon for that. So anyway, write your thoughts down below. I'm sure we'll, we'll have lots of discussions of this Captain Marvel movie, um, you know, over the course of it's until it comes out and with her debuting in the Avengers film. And again, I'm very hopeful, uh, even if not for the suit, for the character. All right, uh, thank you so much for tuning in, and you can check out some more videos right now.